What's up everyone, Michael A.K.A. Spirit Shard here with an early impressions for Idle Civilization. Now, I don't normally cover non-free-to-play early access games, however, the developer sent me a review key for this one, so I decided to go ahead and check it out to see where it was going and thought a video was obviously justified. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and look at it. It is an idle game, as the name would suggest, and so you're going to be doing a lot of either sitting there or letting it run in the background, or actually it progresses while you're offline, and so you could actually just close it and then come back to it later. Anyways. You can't start a new game, what this is going to do is it'll allow you to select your gender and then it'll also allow you to select your name and your shire name. Now the gender only affects some of the in-game like dialogue and tutorials, so it's not really that big of a deal, but you can name yourself whatever you want. We're going to go ahead and continue my game because we're not going to idle for hours. Now right here it's going to show your patch notes. Now I am currently on the December 16th or 6th and 7th patch, I don't know what number that is. Does it show anywhere on the screen? I don't know, it probably showed on the main screen. Anyways. Got it. So here we are at my village, I guess, or my shire, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, you'll see my little thing here. Not very much going on, which is actually my first complaint of the game I'm going to talk about later, but we'll go ahead and get into that later. Now, as you see in the top left, I named myself my lady Awesome Shoes, and I am in the sexy shire of cats, because obviously cats are awesome. But yeah, so you, over here in the top left, you see your different resources. So you got people, you got your food, and you got your logs, and you got your rocks, you got your metal, and obviously moolah, and then you have your faith. Now, this game is about building a civilization, but it's a, like a low-cost civilization, I guess, as in there's not really a lot of threats in this game, except for ones that you impose on yourself. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and go into this. So right here, I'm going to go into the order that the game kind of introduced me to stuff. And so... Basically, I'm going to go in the order that the tutorial would take you. So right here, you're going to start with your people. You're going to click up here to gather some food and wood and stone. And what this is going to allow you is going to allow you to go over to the buildings tab up here, up in the top right, by the way. This is how you get to all your menus. Then you'll be able to go to your buildings. You build a hut and then you go back and you'll have more villagers. Then it's going to show you the skill tree. This is just how you unlock everything. Now, some of these are the like abilities, which will actually unlock features of the game, which will end up un like shading these little blocks up here as you see the tavern and the diplomacy system is grayed out normally all of them will be grayed out except for these first two or three and then as you unlock them they will end up appearing normally but yeah so you will unlock those through here and these have things like metalworking and currency and so you don't actually have all the resources unlocked including faith so those three are actually locked by default and then you unlock a bunch of boosts, like a lot of these are just going to be boosts and stuff like that. However, there is an interesting warfare system and a tavern system, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Anyways, continuing on, then you're going to be able to actually align where your people are going to work. And so this is actually kind of an interesting feature is you're able to basically custom set where you want your people to work. Now, I currently over here, you're able to click on it currently for some reason in my game, it's broken. And so I don't know what's up with that, but you're able to evenly distribute them or you can set them up to go to a different one. So like if I click here and make them all go into food, it'll set all new villagers to go into food and then so on and so forth. And I believe now I can do this. So yes, yeah, so if I just click on this, I believe it just evenly distributes. Anyways, yeah, so basically that's kind of the basic stuff and that's what you're going to be doing for the first big portion of the game however after a little bit of going forward you're going to actually end up unlocking the exploration st like stuff exploration and sightings there we go and here you're going to be able to send out your people and soldiers which we'll talk about later to go and get resources so i'll go ahead and say go ahead and look close by and i'll be like oh you know you gain three building parts now you can also get building parts and research books which will allow you to unlock new buildings or build buildings for free and then you'll be able to unlock new research for free so basically it's another way to unlock that type of stuff which is actually quite nice you can actually if you get 24 building parts you're able to actually unlock a building you've never built before so that's actually a good way to get like a huge boost anyways back to the buildings over here you can see you actually have four of each type of building now i wish there was more but this seems to be all that there is down at the bottom, we also have stalls and walls and the academy. Academy is just a boost. These stalls are actually for the market system. I'm going to talk about a little bit later after we do this. And then the walls, there's going to be random events that happen. And a lot of them will give you boost. However, some of them will actually give you like an attack. And so people will actually attack you and stuff like that. And they will take down walls. Now, I have a few walls. I can go ahead and build a few more. I've never needed more than five walls ever. So <laughs> that's the thing that doesn't happen very often. But it can happen. 
So it's kind of a nice thing. Now, if you don't have a wall up, I believe you lose resources and lose people. However, you're able to build a wall very early on. And so there's really no reason not to. I guess it's a thing if you forget to. Now, another thing I want to talk about the unlocking system is that you actually unlock new features and so forth as you're going through the game, which will actually make the game more interesting. Now, at first, it's going to be a lot of a number game. And actually, to be quite honest, the entire thing is a number game. That's kind of the point of it. But you actually unlock different stuff. So like when you unlock the writing stuff, it actually unlocks this idle times writing thing, which is actually quite a bit of reading. So there's actually a lot of depth within the reading and the events that you can actually go into. Then we can go into the other stuff, such as the currency and the advisor system. So the advisor system is going to allow you to actually view your more advanced stats. So this is the total food gained, the total faith gained, the hero experience I've gained, and so on and so forth, the total clicks I've had, and stuff like this. This is going to reset when you reset into a new colony. Now, this is the other feature of the game, is you're able to actually take all of your stuff, or really take none of the stuff, and reset your progress, and then you'll get colony points, which will allow you to unlock these things. Now, all these are boosts, except for one, which is going to be your marketplace. Now, the marketplace is what I was talking about earlier with those stalls, is you're able to actually buy those stalls to end up getting boosted to this. What this allows you to do is trade resources for another resource, which is quite nice in some respects. Then you also have your, I guess, culture tab, and this allows you to host events. Now, all this is going to do is raise your population happiness, so I can actually just go ahead and host all of these. And what that'll do is it'll just increase my population. Now, you do have civilization points, which is actually earned. You can actually see the values when you go to the colony, which I believe it's when you hover over here. Yes. So if you hover over anything in the game, for the most part, some things don't. But for the most part, when you hover over something, it will actually show in the bottom left a little description, which is actually quite nice. And a lot of things are descriptive. There's some things that would need more descriptions, such as the deity system we're going to go into after this. But for the most part, it's quite descriptive. So you can actually see you get a bunch of different points, and you can only spend that many points in your culture tab. Now, you can reduce it through special events. However, they're extremely rare. Now let's go ahead and talk about the deity system. Now the deity system is kind of like the religion system in the game. And what this allows you to do is worship a deity in your colony. And what these will do is they'll give you special abilities. So down here you see I selected this one for this colony. Now I've had several colonies and I've tried several of them. However, this is my favorite one. Astasia allows you to get a bunch of little time abilities. And so there's literally ability here called time lapse, which increases the speed of time. So I may as well unlock that one because why not? And that actually speeds up the progress of the game. So I actually like this one the best because it makes things go faster. However, there's also ones that like warfare, people who are passive. There's another one that I liked called Danaya Flame of the Hearth, which actually increased like fidelity and things like that. So you can actually get more more population more quickly which was quite nice as well so that was my second favorite the other ones eh, it was all right with now let's go ahead and go into i guess what would be considered the gameplay of it because everything else is pretty standard idle game there's a little bit more advanced stuff as in oh that's to automatically do stuff okay uh it's not letting me open the menu for this. I don't know why. Anyways, we're just going to go ahead and ignore that. Normally, when I clicked on this the first time, it actually showed a little menu that allowed me to select where they were going. But it doesn't seem like... Oh, right here. Evenly. There we go. All right. Th that was just my mistake. My bad. So right here, it actually says evenly down here. So it's not broken. My bad. Completely here. Ignore that. Sorry. Anyways... Onto the warfare system. Now, this is actually where you're able to build your armies. Now, I have no armies because I did something stupid before I recorded and killed all of them, but you can actually go into battle and lose these soldiers, but I'm going to go ahead and build a bunch of them. So let's go ahead and build a thousand axemen, bowmen, and then just click on these other ones a little few random times. I'm just, I'm not really being special about it. I'm just building a bunch of them. And now we got a fairly large army, and let's go ahead and click on the world map. Now, you can also send these guys on the explorations and stuff like that, and this will allow them to go yonder, which will allow you to obtain better stuff but they have a risk of death and this is actually where the cost comes into the game so basically when you send them out on these longer adventures you have higher reward chances and the same with the warfare is you have higher reward chances but you can lose your people which is obviously a downside so that's going to be your fail state is losing people now obviously it's just going to be a matter of waiting for people again but it can be time consuming to do that and you might not want to wait i don't know anyways Here's the world map. Now, each colony that you have will actually have a different world map. And so if you want to re-randomize this, you can. There's also a deity that allows you to re-randomize. And there's also an ability that you can get, which will actually increase the number of buildings that will appear by default. Now, I've already conquered two little buildings. Now, once you conquered these through the three different ways that you can, you can actually get resources passively from them. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and click on this one and we're going to go ahead and attack it. So we can go ahead and attack this town. Now this is how they express all of the action in the game is they just show it in text, which is quite annoying. And they do this with the events, which actually after we talk about this, I'll go ahead and talk about the events because my deity actually allows me to trigger an event. So that'll be easy to talk about. Anyways, so now we've actually conquered this town and that was all that it was. And now we're getting stone and so forth. And you can also declare a crusade, which basically uses the religion to take over it and stuff like that. And then you can also convert the heathens to follow your deity, which is going to take faith instead of actually just attacking them, which all three of these are going to take over the town passively. Now, you can also do all these other types of town stuff. However, you need an artificer's monument, which I have not been able to unlock due to this progress. So I can't really talk much about that. However, there is upgrade systems that you can do. Now, I assume it's going to be mostly passive bonuses and stuff like that and upgrading the town and maybe making it give you more renown so your renown grows as you gain glory by two so renown is used for different types of things i haven't really found what it's used for i think it's used for the diplomacy system which i haven't actually gotten to now there's four different types of tiers and there's also a raid raid is going to go against the green clan which is going to try and get treasure from them these are extremely difficult to do so you need a lot of soldiers and you need them fully upgraded and then also there's the abandoned ruins, which is basically going to be just as difficult. Now, if I click on this, it's going to go ahead and they killed all of my men. So that's how I did all of my men. They dealt a bunch of damage. So, yeah. Then let's go ahead and talk about the event system. And then I'll talk about my problems and then the perks of this game. Because there's a lot of idle games out there. And what is this going to have specially going for it? But let's go ahead and talk about the event system. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and trigger this ability, which will give me an event. Now, they're going to pop up down here. Now, I've actually gotten quite a few of them, so they actually show up. These are the ones for the festival, but if I click on this one, your rock miners have pulled some extra long shifts lately. They have brought you great rewards. Your stone increases by this amount. Now, that's what the events do in this game. Every once in a while, there's going to be a downfall one. They'll be like, hey, your walls got attacked by wolves or something like that, and your walls destroyed. But most of the time, it's a bunch of buffs, or it gives you extra resources, and so on and so forth. I do wish I could see more, like, threatening ones. That way, there is more use for those walls. However, it's not really a big deal because if you go on to yonder, so if we go into our exploration, go on to yonder, they can actually die. However, they live this time. So that's awesome. We got forward population, which is nice. All right. So now let's continue on. So what do I think of this game? What's my kind of conclusion on it? Because what is this game for? People who like idle games I am not necessarily one of them. I do find certain idle games to be interesting. I know Cookie Clicker was an extremely popular one. However, it wasn't the note of progress that I was actually quite interested in. It was the fact that those types of games generally have something interesting going on. They have some sort of flair. So in the case of like Cookie Clicker, as you progress through, it kind of got darker and darker and more grim and interesting as it went on. But once I got to a point to where I wasn't unlocking new flashy stuff, I kind of lost interest in it. And that's kind of how I played them. And I am the type of person who always likes something to do. However, there's tons of things I can do on my idle time. And so having an item game doesn't really appeal to me. Now for some people, that's not going to be the case. Some people are going to love idle games, and if you like number games, you're going to love this game. However, I find that there's no flair to this game necessarily. It's all watching numbers and text, which isn't entertaining for me. Now, one thing I do wish that they did is in the background, I wish they had some sort of animation. And maybe at some point, since this is early access, he'll hire an animator or something along those lines to end up filling that kind of void. However, currently, there's none of that going on and so it's literally just watching numbers the entire time and that's going to be my conclusion on this is to like if you watch like watching numbers then i guess this is good for you and if you like this kind of classical you know click on it watch text go by type of thing maybe but i'm not a fan of it and there's not a lot going for it and i like that they're adding in a risk element because there's not a lot of clicker games and idle games that actually introduce a risk element to it so i can actually lose my population if i'm not careful however it is just a matter of time of just waiting to end up getting them back which some people are going to like that but for me there's no challenge in this it's just waiting until i'm powerful enough to overcome that challenge and it's just not entertaining to me and currently, the art style is not exactly amazing either. Now, it does have a charm to it, and the music is annoying. You'll actually notice throughout this video, I actually forgot to turn back on the sound. So I actually had sound turned off, but if I turn that back on, now, the sound is just a bunch of clicks, 
and then the music just loops over and over and over again, which is actually why I had it disabled. And I, I'm sorry about not <laughs> enabling when I started the video. I completely forgot about it. It saved it as off. So anyways, yeah, and then here you can actually save your games. Now, graphically, the games, I don't want to say it's bad because it's not necessarily good, but it has a certain aesthetic to it and it's fine for an idle game, especially one that's just watching numbers. But I think that having a certain flair to it and a certain progression in that flair would actually add a ton to this game. Because even as I'm unlocking like this new warfare system and so on and so forth, it's all just watching numbers and I'm not finding it very entertaining. I mean, some people are, some people are going to love it. But for me, it's not, it's not worth it. It's just not worth the time because there's nothing to explore. It's just, I get to see a new event and there's tons of reading. But the thing is, it's an idle game and I'd rather have something flashy instead of just waiting and reading because I'm not necessarily playing to read all this stuff. Some people will find it interesting. Like these idle times actually do change as you progress and different events can become interesting, but you're going to see a lot of the same events and the idle times doesn't actually change all too often. It does change when you progress, but there's going to be a certain cap to the game, which is also another complaint is there is a certain cap. As in, there's only so many things you can unlock. Like, if I go to these, you can only unlock a certain amount of things before you're actually completely maxed out. And so there is actually an end to the game. Of course, you can keep going until your numbers are infinite, but is there really a point? And that's that's kind of my conclusion on this one. And I guess that's going to be seen for a lot of idle games. And that's kind of my opinion on a lot of idle games. So... I guess take this review as mostly a personal thing if you like what you see and you like the kind of depth because this does have actually quite a lot of depth compared to a lot of idle games that I've played but it doesn't have the flair that a lot of idle games have played and that's what I'm kind of looking for that's kind of what I would like to see and hopefully you can integrate that in his early access build and so on and so forth as he progresses on and I wish him the best of luck to it but currently I don't really recommend it because there's nothing going on I mean, if you like the idle, like the numbers building, that's fine. But otherwise, I don't really recommend it for people who are going to be hardcore gamers and so on and so forth. I don't really see a point. However, there is that free version on Congregate, so you can check it out on Congregate if you want to. And I'll make sure to have a link to that. But yeah, I don't know. If you want to support the developer, totally do that. But this has been Michael A.K.A. Spirit Shard with Idle Civilization. It's not the most wonderful game I've played. It is nice. I mean, it did interest me for a little bit as I was progressing through it, and I was always looking for that kind of flair, but it never actually got there. I thought the warfare system was interesting, but as it went on, it was just a numbers game, and that's that's all this game is for me. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to be like me that are like, I don't really care, but anyways, if you like the game, make sure to check it out. Also... I'm trying a new audio setup for this. I probably puffed my mic a few times because I don't currently have a pop filter and I need to get one. But I'm trying a new setup for when I'm recording solo stuff and make sure to leave me a comment on how it sounds. This is the first video I've recorded. I believe I'm also doing my next vlog in this style as well. So make sure to leave a comment on it and tell me how it's sounding. And obviously make comments about the game as well if you end up checking out or if there's something I missed that's more complex and maybe there is some flair that I'm missing, you know, make sure to leave that in the comments because I can't always explore everything. But this is kind of my impressions of it and this is what I've gotten so far. And this is after about six days of idling it, which is quite a long time to think about. Anyways, like always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And also... Best of luck to you in the early access. I do hope you had that flair because that would make this actually interesting for me personally. Some people already find it interesting, obviously. So that's good. But yeah, best of luck.